Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy, and Merry Christmas to you, and welcome to another PlayStation Plus free game review video. This time we are looking at the game on Rush for the PlayStation 4, so let's begin. So what exactly is on Rush? Well, unlike other driving games, this game doesn't involve overtaking or finishing a track first. Instead, you are split into two teams, and it's basically a destruction derby type game. You are awarded points or time, depending on the type of uh, level that you're doing, uh, based on completing tricks or smashing your opponent off of the track. Now, obviously, the more you do that, the more points you earn, and after a certain amount of time, you've either run out your opponent's time or you've scored enough points in order to win the round for your team and again depending on what type of level you're doing you win sort of one two or three rounds and you then win that level essentially now to go along with this there are various different vehicles for you to use each with their own sort of different power-ups and their own different skills and strengths and weaknesses and that sort of thing and when you first use each type of car, it gives you a quick rundown as to what their expertise are and how best to kind of use that car or bike, depending on um, what, what level it is that you're doing. And because, as I said, they each have their own kind of specialisms and their own kind of special modes. Because um, basically what you're trying to do each time is build up enough um, boost points in order to be able to execute your kind of special move effectively, your special skill. And then that kind of means that your team can rack up points really, really easily and really quickly. And they range from kind of being able to support the other team members on, on your team by kind of boosting their uh, boost points or being kind of extra strong and resilient in order to smash your opponents off of the track and earn points that way, or you get sort of extra speed or extra kind of ways of hindering your um, opponent by kind of blocking them or kind of pushing them off the track, essentially. Um, but again, all that depends on what car you are driving on in that level. Now, when you first start up the game, you get kind of a quick training session, and this kind of introduces you as to what essentially the rules of the game are, how all the different cars are slightly different from each other, and the way of kind of increasing your boost to then get onto your kind of special ability. And the main way you do that is by, yes, it's kind of one team of six versus another team of six, but the track is littered with essentially fodder and if you smash that fodder out of the way which is usually quite easy just one hit kill essentially um, that kind of racks up your boost points the quickest um, other than that it's kind of getting as much air as you can by going over ramps or near misses where you're kind of very very close to writing your car off effectively um, and if you manage to kind of dodge out of the way of stuff at the last minute you get extra points that way as I said, the game in this training mode kind of introduces you to that and encourages at different times you to kind of utilise all those different ways of gaining your boost points up so that you can then use your um, overdrive move, your kind of special move. Now what it does is it kind of splits the game up into different sections and within those sections are different levels. So the first section, it kind of introduces you to the origins of this new sport that's been made for the game and it kind of paints a very kind of basic story mode effectively as to how this thing sort of started and then it gained a bit more of a following and through that it kind of developed uh, notoriety like online through social media and because of that it then became this really huge uh, worldwide sport now effectively which obviously would be impossible in the real world because you just get carnage and death everywhere but obviously in the context of this game it works quite nicely um, and it just kind of gives a little bit of an extra flavour as to why you're doing what you're doing 
and why things are kind of layered on top of each other as you go through so you're not thrown into everything right from the beginning it kind of gets you used to certain cars first and then it gets you used to different game modes first and kind of so on and so forth adding more bits to it now i've played a fair few hours of it and the main modes that I'm coming across at the moment, um, although there are a couple that I've only just been introduced to, the main one is essentially a points gathering game where you kind of have a target of usually about 10,000 points and it's the first team that reaches that wins the level. The second one is time based where you have to drive through as many gates as possible and effectively stop your opponents from doing the same and your timer is constantly being reduced down to zero and whenever you go through these gates it adds more time onto your team so obviously if you keep skipping gates or keep being put out of commission so that you can't go through those gates you end up getting your time reduced down to zero now they're the main ones um, there's another one where you kind of have to start on a basic car and work your way through and the idea is to smash all your team out of all their different cars um, and they run out of uh, lives effectively, um, kind of almost like a deathmatch style thing, but with cars. And the other one is kind of a, an occupy uh, zone, and that gives you points within the team, and you've got to kind of stay within that zone and batter your opponents out of their zone effectively in order to kind of rack your points up and, and reduce them from doing the same. So there's not an infinite amount of uh, different levels and even the sort of the, those, they don't feel that different from each other. You're effectively just driving round laps round a track again and again and again and there aren't too many different tracks from what I've experienced so far either. Um, and it really is a case of just keep going round the laps again and again and again and smashing to your opponents as much as possible. And... and Depending on the level you're doing, there are kind of obviously your main objective of just win, and then there are other objectives of um, sort of stay alive for a certain amount of time or certain amount of times to destroy your opponents, things like that. And that helps you kind of get extra points to unlock other levels because it, it's kind of structured that way of you need X amount of points in order to unlock the next few levels, and if you don't have all of those points unlocked you've kind of got to go back and do those other uh, kind of secondary missions if you like within those levels to get enough points to unlock them and then you unlock the extra worlds effectively which have other levels in them um, as long as again you've got enough points so it's kind of one of those you get to a point where you've run out of levels because you need to go back a few levels to do those extra bits and pieces to unlock it. It's kind of one of those uh, cheat your way through to making a game feel longer than it is because you haven't got three stars on every level for argument's sake so you've got to go back and make all those one and two stars three stars so that you've got enough to get through all the levels and it's kind of a really naff artificial way of making game feel as big as you possibly can and that kind of thing doesn't wash well with me on top of that there's a few kind of unlockable um like cosmetic things as well depending on if you're leveling up enough you get kind of loot crates um which are, most of them are unlockable in the game but there's other ones where you can spend money to unlock them yourself haven't looked too much into that because again that kind of thing funneling money into that kind of game really isn't worth it for me i don't see the point in it as far as i can make out a lot of this stuff is cosmetic anyway so meh, i just i don't care about that side of things really so moving on to buy try or fly you will see this game on the PlayStation Store at the moment is $49.99. Now, I'm guessing this is mainly because this game only came out at the beginning of June on PlayStation 4. So unlike most of the other games that we've had recently, this isn't an old game that's kind of been reworked and remastered and cleaned up. Uh, this is a brand new game um, and it's still retaining that very, very high price tag. Uh, so for that there's no way in hell you should be spending £50 on this kind of game at all and for me 
because it's sort of become repetitive very, very quickly, and because of those pointless microtransactions to unlock what is effectively nothing, for me, I would just fly past this game. It's already become kind of tedious and hard work to get through. Not hard work in terms of difficulty, but hard work in terms of why am I bothering to do this? The fun has got sapped out of it so quickly. Yes, there are different types of cars, but you end up doing really the same sort of thing in all of them, just smashing people out of your way. They don't really play that differently from each other. There aren't that many tracks involved, um, so yeah, it becomes very repetitive very quickly. And then when you're forced to go back towards the earlier stages of the game in order to get enough of these kind of level points to open up extra worlds and levels later on, it's just a really naff way of extending the life of a game beyond what it actually should be. Why can't you just complete level 1 and unlock level 2 and then unlock level 3 that way and rather than have to keep going back to do an extra thing. Fine if there were bonus levels maybe and you can unlock bonus levels by going back and doing that if you wish to but this is just to get you progressing through the main linearity of the game and I just I don't see as that is a necessary way of, of structuring a game other than to artificially make it seem bigger than it is and it really grates on me. So there we go, there were my thoughts on Onrush on PlayStation 4. If you have played the game please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will be looking at Soma in a couple of weeks time as our other free game on PlayStation 4. But until then, I've been that British guy, have a very merry Christmas and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.